Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the next big career chapter for me. So people have been asking, what are you doing? Where are you going? Um, so I just left a job, which is fine. Good, good intentions, no hard feelings. Um, but I'm off to find the next big adventure. And it's been very hard to explain to people what I'm doing because there's a lot of details to it and I'm not crystal clear on this. And the number one issue with this is people keep coming to me saying, Dimitri, what position are you wanting? Like, what is the exact position you're looking for? And my answer is, I don't want a job that has a position. And it sounds kind of odd, um, but in my mind, I don't want that job. Like, I could go be a managing director at a bank or a hedge fund or something specific. And this is the cookie cutter job. We need someone to come in, do this role, you know, and just make things happen. And it's very well defined. It's a task where, you know, 50, 100, 200 people could apply. You could find 10 to 20 good candidates, pick one of them, and the job will get done. No big deal. I don't want that. Um, I want something challenging. I want something where I can lead. I can drive change. Um, I need a job that has like a big, strong desire to make things happen, be unique, have hard challenges, um, both technically and on the business, human, capital kind of side of this, I'm looking to lead, drive, and change the industry, the quantitative finance risk management space here. Um, so I really have kind of three things I'm working on with this simultaneously. Uh, the first one is I'm just opened up to opportunities here. So the reason I you know, didn't have another job lined up after I left my first job is I want to publicly announce it. I wanna make this video. Um, I wanna to talk to people and say, hey, I'm not secretly looking behind closed doors because when I do that, my you know, breadth of people that are gonna be able to hear about it and talk about it is gonna be very small. It's gonna be my kind of core group of people when it was not publicly announced. Uh, me leaving and then looking, I can now be public about it. I would like it to be broad. I would like to be able to kind of reach out there and like find something unique. I'm in no hurry to do it. I'm not looking for a job. Uh, I've had a few people approach me, say, hey, we'd love for you to come work with us. Um, here's a job offer. And I've thought about them deeply and I'm like, they seem a little bit too cookie cutter or it doesn't seem like it's going to stretch me enough. I'm looking for something that's extraordinary. Like I want that company that says, oh, we have this problem. We need this solved. You know, I can't just hire anyone to do it. I need a unicorn. That's what I want to fill is a job where it's very hard to define. You have a, you know, specific problems and issues. You're trying to figure out how to put it together. And you're looking for someone that has expertise uh, on management, team building, quantitative finance, including AI, ML, data science, you know, machine learning, math, stats, and all that. Um, risk management, structures, designs, data governance, you know, a bunch of these skills I have that all kind of come together as a unique set. I'm looking for someone that says, hey, we have something extremely hard to do. I need a very rare person to do this with this unique kind of blend of skills. That is the first thing I'm doing. And this could be a wide range of things. So let me just lay out some examples of this. It could be I'm um, working in academia. It could be a university that says, hey, we need a professor to teach these specific courses, more hands-on, uh, more industry-driven. Um, it could be also a university saying we need expertise within career development, career services, um, and a few of these sorts of things. We need somebody to really kind of jazz this up, get some drive, help our students really get traction and have real world experience. Uh, it could also be something like working at a you know chief risk officer at some sort of firm. They want someone that looks at risk both technically, so quantitatively and qualitatively, and understands it's not just doing math and modeling. Um, there's a lot of processes and procedures and governance that all goes into this and regulatory concerns and issues that you need to be considered. Um, and then you need to build teams, bring in people, it could be a role similar to that within the corporate space in itself. Um, it could also be something technical, like, hey, we have a startup coming up. Um, I'm looking for someone that has technical expertise that can really dive into the nitty gritties, come up with some unique modeling structures and designs. Um, again, there's going to probably be some team building aspects to it, um, but it could just be a startup opportunity of like, hey, we need to hit the ground running. We need to build something extraordinary. Uh, we want the best and the top talent on it. Could be anything, academic, industry, non-industry. I don't know, I'm open to whatever. And the purpose of this is really just to do the exploration phase. That is my first piece of seeing what is out there, what is available. Um, the second piece of this is going to be um, the fact that I am actually running right now my own LLC. So it's Fancy Quant LLC. Again, if you're not familiar, uh, Fancy Quant implies you have the fancy business suit side of this. 
you know, the social skills, the structuring, the processes, all that things. And then you have the quant side of this. So I actually do the math, stats, modeling, programming, everything all together. And this has been something I think that many people just can't even fathom, which it seems very odd. Um, I went to a conference recently at AI4. Um, I've been networking, talking to people as well, going to different sorts of events. And people keep asking me, okay, are you the management side or are you like the technical coding modeling side? And it's like, I do both. And they're like, no, no, no. But what side can you actually do? Like it doesn't click in their head. There are people that can actually do both and do both well. But I'm doing a consulting process here. Again, I have three kind of main areas I'm targeting here. Uh, Again, similar to the jobs, one is going to be academia. So focusing on academia itself, there are a ton of master's programs, whether it's a stats program, applied math, financial engineering, financial mathematics, like computational finance, data science, machine learning. There are a ton of programs out there that could really use um, a few different products and services. And I will talk about these more in another video, but really looking at how you structure the program, the curriculum, the teachers, uh, the career services that you are and aren't offering within the program. And then also the branding and the development of relationships, which a lot of these programs seem to be struggling with, which is, you know, we have a relationship with three firms, right? I know these three people, but they're not always hiring. How do you build quality relationships with a bunch of different firms or companies or banks or hedge funds in the industry such that it helps kind of give back to your program through, you know, presentations, information, as well as the hiring side, which I know is what programs over focus on. And so often you don't get a good relationship, which results in not getting uh, job, you know, offers to your students here. So again, there's a lot of things that I could do to really help the industry on the academic side of this, whether it's teaching, training, educating, program reviews, and all of that. Um, the second piece here is going to be just industry expertise here. So I oddly have grown up alongside the risk management growth here in the United States and probably globally as well. Uh, 2010, we saw the Dodd-Frank Act get implemented. Um, CROs were mandated, so chief risk officers. And then as we kind of progressed through, I was in that stage. My first job, I built out the first implementation team um, for CCAR, so Comprehensive Capital Assessment and Review Process for regula regulations there. I built out all the processes and procedures. And I was the only employee. I had a manager, of course. Um, and they're like, you know, go for it, run for it. And it was an amazing opportunity. And I built all that out. And then I was able to go to a consulting firm where we're one of the big global banks, helping build out their standards, helping them pass CCAR for the first time. Um, and then going through risk topology, risk frameworks at another firm, working in model validation, uh, model development, implementation, and internal audit across the spectrum, working with a variety of teams in senior roles as well, whether it's data quality, data governance teams, uh, tech implementation and tech teams as well, just more on the tech side. And again, the technical side and the business and operations teams. I've built great relationships through that. I've really advanced through you know, a career and I've had a lot of exposure to a variety of different areas here. So again, providing services on risk, risk management, that side of it, the structure of the framework, putting the pieces together. Um, also on the other side of this, you know, looking at governance as well. Uh, on the other side of this though, looking at the technical aspects of, do you have the right technical team? Are you getting the right technical models? Are you implementing your models correctly? Do you have analytics teams that are doing things correctly? Or are they just doing hand wavy uh, analytics and making poor decisions, right? Having that sort of expertise is something else I'm kind of taking on as the industry kind of consulting side as that. And then the third big service here I'm offering, which I wasn't planning on originally offering, but this is going to be career development and career advisory services. So again, I'm quite young, but I've gone through the very junior levels all the way up having you know executive offers, uh, being the head of different departments, running teams, running divisions, building them out. Um, but also I look at a lot of resumes and I talk to a lot of people in the industry and I talk to people on the buy side and the sell side and I talk to people in tech. Um, I have a great breadth of you know experience and information within the hiring space and career development here as I've built out a decent career for myself. Um, and people are saying, hey, we'd love to have a phone call with you. And over the last probably five to eight years, I've said no phone calls. I'm not taking any phone calls. I don't have the time. I don't have the bandwidth. Now I have the, the time, um, but... I'm gonna have to be able to be comped for this time now because I'm juggling these kind of pieces here. So the third piece of consulting is going to be career development. And again, that could be anything from a student all the way up through you know executive levels of like, I'm trying to reposition, trying to get to a new role. Um, I've 
advised managing directors in many cases trying to get to that executive title or trying to get switched into a different kind of responsibility and role set here as well. So that's going to be that third piece. And then stepping back again, um, the last piece here is going to be Avo Labs. So I've kind of hinted at it. I've kind of talked about it. Um, it's came up probably the last few months here. Um, Fred Viole over at Avo Labs, I think has a great idea, a great business model. And in that space here, I need to catch up on what he's working on, what he's doing. I think Avo Labs could be something extraordinary. It's not going to be just NNS, which is non-linear, non-parametric statistics. Um, it is going to be something that is much bigger. It is going to bring in other research ideas and properties. It's going to be a real fintech. Um, I am unofficially working on some AI projects behind the scenes, trying to get caught up on things, looking at how we can make um, Avo Labs a fintech with AI, like actual real AI, not like, you know, hand wavy. I ran a prompt and like, it's AI. Um, no, we're doing actual AI, AI research on that. Um, again, looking at statistical and modeling, trying to do things better and more academically rigorous. This is something I have struggled at with many firms is I want to do it this way. And the firm's like, we just don't care. We want to hurry and get there fast. Um, they just need a model. They just need a solution. And they're trying to get there. Um, with Avo Labs, it allows me to step back, build better tools um, and kind of position it as a real true financial technology firm in the sense that we produce technology generated towards finance um, that could be used by actual funds. Um, again, this seems to be focusing more on the investing, the buy side with this. So investing hedge funds, wealth management firms. We have a great product line that Fred's already built out. A lot of it's ready to roll. Uh, it's getting going, but we need investors so we can get out more servers. Um, it'd be great to get investments so we can bring someone like myself on full time. Um, so this isn't just a side project and a hobby. Anyways, that is what I'm working on. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments below. I am happy to answer them as well. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Until next time.